Pedro from EMP Reacts, I'm here today with Tommy to talk about A Christmas Carol, the upcoming album by Majestic. Uh, how's it going? Uh, it's all good. It's been um, yeah, it's, it's been a horrible year, but it's uh, also been a good year. So yeah, all is good here. <laughs> it, it's it's a mixed bag year. It, you know, it's been almost a year since I saw you in Toronto. It was I saw you in Toronto last year in October. It's yeah. end of November, so it's been about a year since we talked. But last time we were talking about Sabaton, now we're talking about Majestica and the album A Christmas Carol. Let me start by asking you this. When the idea for this album came to life? Well, the idea to make a Christmas album for me came uh, at least 10 years ago. Uh, you know, I love Christmas and I love the music around Christmas. And to do a Christmas covers is something that is very, very appreciated. And it's fun. Because everyone knows all the Christmas songs, uh, so I always wanted to release a Christmas album. But every year it's been the same, you know. It's like, oh, it's December. Oh shit, I forgot to do this Christmas album. Oh well, there's always next year. Then the next year comes. Ah, oh, damn it! I knew it was something I was gonna do this year. Ah oh, well, there's always next year, and it's been like that all the time. Uh, and then last year we thought, okay, we should do something Christmassy. Uh, not a Christmas album since we released this album last year uh, with uh, Majestica. So <clears throat> then we thought, okay, let's do a, just a quick uh, one minute cover of Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. So we did that. We put it out on uh, our social media and uh, people seem to appreciate it very much. So we said, okay, let's do a Christmas album next year. Absolutely. And then the conversation stopped. We didn't talk about it until I got home from Russia. Uh, we were on tour with, Rush, with Russia in Sabaton. We were on tour in Russia with Sabaton. <laughs> and uh, then I got home and, you know, it's like, okay, we'll, we'll be at least a couple of months before we will start touring again. Uh, it's, it would be at least a year until we can do that again now. So I got home and said, okay, what should I do? Then my girlfriend said to me, well, maybe now is a good time for you to start with a Christmas album. Very good idea. So I started with a couple of Christmas songs. I uh, started with uh, actually The Ghost of Christmas Past was the first song I wrote. And I thought, okay, what theme? You know, I, b because we said if we're doing a Christmas album, we could do a Christmas album with original songs, but we use Christmas melodies in the songs, not only doing a, a, co a cover album like everybody else does. Mm -hmm. So, uh, then I thought, well, the the story of Scrooge is, uh, you know, it's always been there with me since, since I played Scrooge in a school play. So, well, it's a famous Christmas story. Yeah, let's let's do that one. That's cool. So I uh, sang uh, that song, like, telling about Scrooge. And the guys liked it in the band. They thought, wow, this is very cool, singing about Scrooge. Then I did the, the Ghost of Christmas yet to come and I'm singing like I am Scrooge and we thought okay this is much cooler like we're playing the, the entire uh, story and if we're playing the story we need different voices so we <clears throat> contacted a couple of people to do some guest vocals uh, and then while we were re recording we thought that it would be cool if some of the other guys can sing as well. So Joel, our, our drummer, our new drummer, he's a great singer, so he got to sing a couple of songs. And uh, Alexander, he, is, he sings uh, as well on two songs. And then, of course, me and Chris were doing uh, one song together as a duet, because there's this one, uh, there's two duets, uh, The Ghost of Christmas Present and The Ghost of Marley. And since Chris is a great singer, that would be a cool thing. He has a really you know, rough voice and he needs to be a, a ghost, an angry ghost. But Jacob Marley, a Scrooge old friend who's dead, comes back to him as a ghost and he's not very happy. That would be cool. So we did, so we did that. So he sings that song and uh, we got some other voices uh, every here and there. <clears throat> so yeah, it turned turn into a power metal Christmas musical all of a sudden. Uh, yeah. didn't, yeah, we didn't mean to, but it, it, it just happened. And then we continued to do that work with that. Okay, so the last song 
I cannot sing for five minutes. Oh, I'm uh, awake, uh, newly awakened. I have time to redeem myself. Everything will be fine. I cannot sing like that for five minutes. So we need to have choirs, different voices. And it's a typical, you know, musical ending to it. Do, do you feel like the metal community was missing an album like this? Because at Christmas time, it seems like there's a lack of metal Christmas music. And, and the ones that are out there, like you said, are covers of existing Christmas songs. So there's not a lot of like new material that has the theme of Christmas, but that also has a little bit of metal into it. So for metalheads, Christmas is it's, it's really dire straits. There's not much for us to listen to. So was that one of the reasons that really pushed you to make an album like this? Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, there's so so many cover albums out there. You you Google Christmas metal on Spotify, you will not find so many songs that sounds Christmassy. You will find Christmas songs that sounds heavy metal, but uh, it doesn't sound like Christmas because Christmas has you know it needs certain instruments, certain elements. Uh, ways to, how to build up the song, certain melodies that needs to you know change, uh, you know to you, you need to go uh, change in the scale in a certain way uh, to make it sound like uh, Christmas, and you you don't hear that. Uh, of, co of course, there's some people who have made Christmas covers, you know, symphonic, and they have the the sleigh bell and glockenspiel and all that, but. Uh, Still, it's covers and not so many. Uh, one guy actually said that this Christmas, uh, this Christmas album uh, is not as cool as the Rob Halford Christmas album. Well, it's a of course, if you like Judas Priest, then yes. But if, you like <laughs> Christmas, if you like Christmas and you want a power metal album, a heavy metal album to sound like Christmas, then this is a way to do it. Not, you know, just adding guitar and singing Christmas. Then you're just singing about Christmas. It's not a Christmas song. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. My, my wife doesn't let me play a lot of heavy music in the living room when we're just hanging around. But I played your album and I was like, you know, this year I'm, I'm the DJ for the Christmas holiday music. So I, I'm playing your album. And she really enjoyed it because she felt like it was heavy, but it had the Christmas spirit in it. So she was able to digest through it and, and just really enjoy it. So I think that speaks volumes for what you guys have created. That's cool. I'm very glad to hear that. Say hello to your wife from me. <laughs> thank I her will. for enjoying <laughs> the album. Well, what was the aspect of making this album that you felt was the most challenging? To make it sound like Christmas. And of course, to fit in the story. <clears throat> because I mean, to sing uh, every story, song has a story. Uh, most of the song, I mean, ninety-nine percent of all songs has a story, even more. But an existing story, and you're doing an entire album about it. You have, you need. There's so many things you need to have in this album. So to write the lyrics for this one was, that was, I think, the hardest part. Because, I mean, one song for Ghost, uh, for Marley, Present, Past, and Yet to Come. The four songs for, for Ghost, Ghosts. And, you know, I needed to cover so many things in one song. Like when he goes to the past, he, uh, he goes to see himself as a child. A lot of things happening there. Uh, when he is at a party and he meets his girlfriend, a lot of things happening there. And to see why he and his girlfriend go separate ways, it's like a lot. Is, it's like in a movie. That's like ten minutes of uh, things that are happening. And now we need to describe it in three minutes. That was hard, really, uh, because I, I did the first verse and okay, perfect. Oh yeah, that's right. I need to add that. People don't understand that. Oh shit. Go back, rewrite, do it again. Uh, the same with the last verse as well, when he's singing, when we're, where you're thinking about how he sees himself sad and lonely, and his girlfriend has found another guy because he appreciates her more, and also fit in a choir to react on that. That was hard, but it was fun. It was a challenge. 
And then some things have just, you know, I just go with the flow. For example, Ghost of, uh, sorry, I got something in my head. So Ghost of Christmas Present, we even have some uh, uh, voice acting. And I didn't mean to, to do that. It was more like, I did a song, I wrote the lyrics. Okay, cool. Now I have everything done. Anders in the Unity, so he can sing his parts. And then uh, the song was done. I was listening to it, and hmm, we have this thing when he goes back to see his uh, nephew Fred when they're playing this game, making fun of Ebenezer Scrooge. I didn't have that in the song. Well, I can cover everything. It's so much information. But then I realized, okay, I can do that little play in this small instrumental part, and it fits perfect. It was like, wow. I didn't know that. Uh, it was like I I wrote the, the music for that um, with, uh, un, with no intention of using that part of the story, but it fits perfect. Yeah. So that, that was the hardest part to, to fit the story and also to make it sound like Christmas. Now, you said that you've been you, you've had the idea for this album for a very long time. Now, were you creating some pieces of what the record has become throughout that period of time and kind of like putting away this piece here, this piece there, and now finally you had time and you got all the pieces together to finalize the product? Or was this something that now you had the time and you almost started from scratch? Uh, almost started from scratch. Because, of course, I've been writing a lot of Christmas songs and uh, some of them are very, very good. Some of them... I always thought, okay, I'm going to use this in a Christmas album. But then I started to write this album and I realized, okay, these songs, they don't fit. They're not this kind of um, music. We need to make it uh, to fit to the story. Uh, so uh, all these songs were written uh, this year. But the idea started a long time ago, but the songs were written uh, this year. So, well, actually five of them were, were <laughs> written within two weeks because we it became kind of stressful to make it to do everything in time. One of the songs were also written during the recording. While they were recording the drums, I was sitting writing the ballad because we needed a ballad. Of course, stupid of me, forgot that. A piano ballad is very Christmas, so we need to have that. So they were recording the drums. I was sitting in a room writing the ballad. Okay, I'd go out, listen to this song and then, oh, we like it. Okay, let's record it. <laughs> that, that must be stressful i mean you know like it, it's coming to that crunch time you guys are already recording the album and here you are okay i forgot something i need to add one more song i need, I need to add a piano ballad do, do, you, do you start to sweat you start to feel the pressure or you you kind of get into the zone and and you just concentrate on what you're doing uh i'm concentrating on what i'm doing of course uh it's also stressful but if you like it, if you enjoy it, it's okay if it's stressful because there's negative stress and positive stress. And this was positive stress all through, really. Uh, through the entire process of recording and writing the songs, it was very stressful. Um, I was up all night writing songs. Uh, I, I had this thing, when it gets light, when the light comes back outside, that's when I go to bed. So it was stressful, but it was also fun. and. I don't know. I, I work pretty well under stress. Well, I would uh, say so, I'm considering the results. I'm, I'm sorry? I, I would say that you work very well under stress, considering the results with the album. Well, glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was blown away. I was expecting the album to be uh, a Christmas album, but I didn't expect it to have as much of a Christmas spirit in it as it has. And, and that takes me to the next question. What makes Majestic a, such a, a special band that you guys can pull off a record like this? Not every band could do an album like you guys just did. What, what makes you guys different from that perspective? I think because we don't care about what people think. We don't care. I mean, we, we don't write music to please other people. We write music that would please us. Because I know that people, um, when it comes to heavy metal, power metal is not uh, such a big genre anymore like it was in the early 2000s. So I know today is all about being heavy, growling, it should be fast, and the production should be clean. And 
we don't care about that. We write music because we, we want to, not because we have to. And if I want to write an album that sounds like Christmas, I will not give up until I have an album that sounds like Christmas. And also because one of my biggest dreams is, you know, to write music for a movie. So Alan Silvestri, John Williams, Danny Elfman, big heroes. And to, to be like them would be, to have their occupation would be a, a dream come true. But I know also it's, it's very hard, really. <clears throat> so the, the least I can do is, the closest thing I can do to, get to do that is to put that in my music that I, that I write. To make it sound like a movie. You, 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 when you get the sensation that, oh shit, this reminds me of that movie, then I, I feel I've done a good job. Uh, for example, Welcome to the Theater, an album with Rain Seed, the same band, uh, from 2012. The entire album is only about movies, and every movie sounds like that. Every song sounds like a certain movie. So I you know, every now and then when the album was released, I played it for people. So I guess what movie this is, song is about? And they listen, oh, I get this Jurassic Park vibe to it. Yeah, that's correct. And oh, this one sounds like Terminator. It is about Terminator. And, you know, th there is such a great feeling because then I really feel I have succeeded. Because music is all about, you know, it's about feeling. Uh, you feel something when you hear music. You feel, this is good. You feel, this is awful. Or you feel... This reminds me of my childhood. And to, to capture certain feelings in, in music is really what I'm trying here. I'm trying to get the sensation that when you're listening to, that, to this music, you should feel like, like you're a kid again. Because th that's how everybody should feel around Christmas. Even though you're a grown, grown man, you have kids on your own, you have a, a job, whatever you always you, you still feel like okay i wonder if there's any presents for me underneath <laughs> uh, oh i got a christmas present thank you i wonder what it is just like you felt when you were a kid of course when you were a kid uh the biggest issue was number of presents not what's yes. inside it. <laughs> yeah it was it was definitely about quantity not quality exactly now it's about quality but still when you realize, oh, there's no more presents for me, you yeah. feel a little bit like, ah, oh, damn, no more. <laughs> you feel that. Uh, I mean, so of true. course, you, you, yeah, you're more mature and uh, you, 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 you know, accept that. Okay, I don't get so many presents. It's mostly yeah, you don't show it as much, but it still, it still, it still hurts you on the inside once you once you realize you're down to the last one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly, and, and that's that, that's one of the things I wanted to to you know to do with this album, so people can listen to this album and feel really that this is Christmas. Really, that this is it's, it's all about Christmas, the feeling around Christmas. And we we could have chosen chosen another uh, story, uh, but I mean, Ebenezer Scrooge is a uh, one of the most well-known yeah. Christmas stories. Of course, we have the Grinch, we have Krampus, we have uh, Santa Claus. A lot of things to do. But Scrooge, uh, if I mean, if we're going to do uh, more Christmas albums, I think Scrooge is a great story to start with. I, I agree with you. And and you said that you played Scrooge in a, in a high school musical or play. So the mm -hmm. question I have for you is: do, do you have a Scrooge currently in your life? Is there a Scrooge hanging around? No, I don't think so. You, and you're not a Scrooge either, right? No, absolutely not. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a Scrooge. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think I have a Scrooge in my life. No, no, I don't think so. That's good. So you, you didn't have to take any inspiration from anybody around you. You just went straight to the story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to ask you a little bit about what you just said, that you, your dream would be to make music for movies and stuff, because that's very interesting. If you were given an opportunity to do that, would you would you go towards, for example, a musical where perhaps you would have a much wider range of what you could do? Or you would like to just do the score, for example, for an action movie or for a drama? Uh, doesn't really matter. 
doesn't really matter <coughs> if it's a musical or a <coughs> sorry if it's a musical or a drama action movie that doesn't really matter just you know the the, the fact that you put music uh, that you know the music uh, how to say when you see something and the music you you feel in the music that it's connected to the picture that's what i what i would like to do because i've i've done this before uh, there's a swedish composer who worked with uh, Colin Nutley he came to our school once and said asked if we could uh, uh, put some music to his uh, movies because he wanted to see if there was someone here that uh, you know he could work with. It was a music songwriting academy I, I went to a couple of years ago, and I got this scene uh, that he said I always want to have music in this scene, but Colin Hartley said no. So I want you to put music to this scene. So I did. I looked uh, at that scene and I did some music. Of course, I did action movie music. It was just a a woman cleaning before her husband comes home. I think she was cheating or something. Uh, and and you know m most people they did like a piano soft music, but I understood right away what's happening here. It's, it's stressful. It needs to happen. You know a lot of things happening. And he said this is the song that fits the best really to the scene of all of this. So I got a lot of good you know credit in the presentation. But I also said that this is would fit maybe better in a Hollywood action movie than a Swedish comedy drama drama movie. <laughs> but anyway, I, I got the opportunity to really try and fit music to moving pictures to uh, get the feeling what's happening in the movie in, into my music, and that was so it was amazing. It was so much fun, really, and I. If, if that's something I would do for a living, I would not hesitate one bit. I have one more question for you, and that is with all the time that, well, perhaps not all, all the time because you're, you've been busy working on this Christmas album, but with no tours with Sabaton and there's still no tours in the horizon because we don't know exactly what's happening. Are you working on some new material for the next Majestica album? Yes, I am. We started to work on new material before the the above the sky was released so we uh we are the plan was to record a new album with majestica this year and uh, maybe release it next year next year but then this christmas album thing came up and we thought okay let's let's do this this, this would be a fun a nice thing to do so uh we have a lot of material for the next album it's not done uh, we still have a couple of more songs we need to write but uh I think next album is going to be uh, very, very, very cool as well. So you're looking at next year for recording and releasing, or are you going to record next year and then push it to early, like 2022? I think maybe 2022 that we can release it by then. Hopefully, we, we'll see what happens. I mean, anything can happen. Uh, now we have to see what happens with the Christmas album, because, I mean, we already have plans for uh, next Christmas album as well. Oh, I was going to say, if this Christmas album goes well, maybe you guys will do a Valentine's album. Maybe, or uh, maybe a summer power metal album. How how metal a would it sound like summer? I don't know, but uh, a Halloween themed uh, power metal album sounds amazing. That would be cool as well. Absolutely, that is uh, something that a lot of people have done, but uh, to to get that scary exciting feeling to it that that is maybe something we should uh, pull off i think I, th I think if there's a band out there that can do that kind of stuff is definitely you guys you, you guys are super creative and you're able to create music that paints a picture like when i was listening to a christmas carol i could see the story playing in front of me even though i'm not watching anything i'm just listening to the music but the music is so vivid the way you guys tell the story is so interesting I could see the characters walking around and talking to each other. I could see everything in front of me, even though I'm just listening to the music. So if there's somebody who can definitely do this, is is you guys. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, Tommy, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate you taking the time. It was a pleasure talking to you about A Christmas Carol by Majestica. It comes out December 4th on Nuclear Blast right before the holidays. Perfect timing. Pick it up. Play it at home. 
do it like I'm doing. I, it's going to be my Christmas holiday music for the for the rest of the season. So awesome. uh, I, I hope everybody enjoys it as much as I am. And uh, all the best for you and your loved ones for the holidays. Thank you. You too. Take care. Take care. You too.